Hello and welcome to another episode of Open Studio. I'm your host, Martina Flor, and in this show I have honest conversations with artists, designers, and creatives to uncover their paths and discuss the specific tactics they use to overcome challenges and succeed on their own terms. Today I'll be having a conversation with Luca Barcellona. He is an Italian artist, musician, graphic designer, and point of reference for modern calligraphy worldwide. Letters are the building blocks of his work. His approach to the discipline, blending classical styles and his experience in the world of graffiti has inspired new generations of calligraphy enthusiasts. He has done lettering for major fashion and clothing brands, albums, films, theaters, and books, and his work is in permanent collections of major museums around the world. Luca teaches and lectures in several institutions and he has held workshops and been on stage as a speaker at dozens of conferences. He's also the author of several books which he publishes with Lazy Dog Press, his independent publishing house for unique books. Luca is a passionate and inspiring artist. He was a pioneer for bringing calligraphy into more commercial environments like clothing and magazines. He has been working as a calligrapher and lettering artist for almost two decades. And in this show, he shares his journey of developing a skill and turning letter forms into his creative media. During the show, Luca shared how he went from being a clerk of a record store which he enjoyed very much because he was able to spend time listening to music, one of his favorite things in the world, to developing a passion for calligraphy and lettering and starting his solo business. Luca spoke about the concept of building a good name as a currency, which was new to me, and I think it will be a good reminder for you at whatever stage you are in your creative journey. Enjoy this conversation with Luca Barcellona. Hi, Luca. How are you doing? Fine. Very fine. What about you? I'm doing great. I'm so looking forward to talk to you today. And you told me that you're now in your studio in Milan, right? Yes. Yes, it's true. You have been working there forever or is this a new studio or? Well, I just realized I'm in the studio uh, since 14 years and before I had another studio in Milan mm. for other three years. So, yes, uh, a lot of people uh, came a- a- and go <laughs> in this place, but I, I, I'm still here and I like it. I'm, it's, like a, it's like to have a, your, your room that becomes more and more stratified with things and stories to tell and i realized this when when people come in the first time they start to look at little things that for me are normal but it's a lot of things because it it's yeah 14 years of living and working you know it's a part of my life definitely it's funny because i want to tell this background story to our listeners because before starting the podcast i normally send my guests possible questions that may come up during the show and you know as you know um, Luca my guests are artists uh, and designers like you and it turns out that many of them at some point of their lives they move cities where you know they move to cities where quote-unquote opportunities are or they decided to leave their hometown to reach a more international market so among these questions that I sent to my guests up front, there is one recurrent question, which is, why did you decide to relocate? And Luca, before starting the podcast, sent me an email saying like, hey, Martina, you should know that I never moved out of Milan. I never moved. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I, I love to start there. I love to st- I'd love to start there if you are willing to share and dig a little bit deeper into why you are living in Milan. You were born in Milan. And you continue to live and work there. Um, And being an artist that has built a pretty international career, I can imagine that the idea, the idea of relocating cities um, has crossed your mind at some point of your life. Or maybe not, but I want to ask you a little bit, what are the reasons for you to choose Milan um, and to work there and why? 
Well, first of all, I have to say that I come from a smaller town near Milan, so it's in the interland of Milan that is called Sesto San Giovanni. So Milan for me is like New York <laughs> compared to Sesto. <laughs> so I, I moved actually from that small town to, <laughs> to Milan, but are two cities very near. Then Milan offers you a lot of opportunity. And so I always uh, like to live here. I, um, I have relationships and friendships here. So is my, I consider my hometown, definitely. And it's not like other cities in, uh, in Italy because it's a really particular city like every big cities is not uh, mm. is not the, the the place where you can judge uh, a country uh, from uh, it's a multicultural mm. uh, it, uh, place it's a business place so it's slightly different you can feel at home uh, in new york and in milan probably in the same way and meet several uh, people from other towns and speaking other languages you know that kind of so that kind of feeling so i love it and uh, i always wanted to move somewhere else but there there is not another place that was calling me uh, mm. i have to say that i i traveled a lot during the the last 15 mm. years and when i say a lot uh, i mean uh, a lot <laughs> i mean uh, i mean do not having more than 10 weekends in the year to spend with your family uh, that kind of stuff mm. and seven years uh, ago i had my my daughter so i decided to keep traveling and but traveling with her as well so mm. we've been in for workshops in australia japan uh, brazil uh, and uh, I'm telling you this because uh, I always uh, been otherwhere, otherwhere. Uh, so I, I, I liked to have a place to come back, feeling mm. this place like home, but I was always around. Uh, of course, after the pandemic, uh, this changed. I, I, I never, I never told this story but i i risked a lot because uh, during uh, the the first lockdown here in italy because we mm. were living in the future you know <laughs> i was yeah. in mexico and in in mexico for workshops and over there there was no pandemic and here mm. everything was closed so i struggled i struggled to to come back and when i came back i said mm. maybe this is a kind of a, a message that I need to quit a little bit. And I was, uh, uh, mm -hmm. I was uh, probably uh, waiting for, a, for something that says me, okay, it's time to stop and stay here, stay with your family. So now uh, it, these two years are the, the, the first period that I'm in Milan without traveling a lot, ex except some small trips around uh, Italy, but not going too far, not going mm. overseas. So I, yeah, I, I like this place, but uh, I remember that in New York, I, I, I met uh, uh, Ken Barber and Alex, Alex Troshut, and Alex mm -hmm. said me that he was, uh, he, he was just moved in New York. Uh, and he said me something that made me think, because he said me like, uh, I needed some new energy i needed to move and to go in another city and i said that makes sense but honestly i didn't felt the same call because i was already traveling a lot i, I don't need to to move I, I needed some a place to to feel like home so it seems that all this inspiration and all this uh you know new fresh view over the world that people are seeking for when they relocate cities. You were getting that from traveling around yeah. and teaching workshops in different places. Um, and you just mentioned that, you know, because of the pandemic, you 
you were kind of forced to stay in Milan for a longer period of time. So I want to ask you, what, what, how do you think that impacted your life and your work, either positively or negatively? You can choose to talk about any of these aspects that have um, had to do with, you know, staying in a, in a city for a long time, whereas you were having or you were carrying on with the life that had to do with being often uh, on the road, right? Yeah. And when I when I say on the road, I mean, not two days or three days. I mean, like a month in a place, a month in another place. So it's quite mm. like to 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 move a little bit. No, mm. I know that yeah. you cannot understand definitely a city without living there for a long time. I know. But uh, but it was enough for me. Uh, well, now the first thing that, that I that I have in my in my mind, uh, if I think uh, after pandemic, Uh, I I reduced my uh, talking on social media in English, for example. I mm. noticed that it was natural. Mm. Like a, 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 I'm not so connected with all the world, but more local. Yeah, it's just a small thing, but probably means something. I started mm. yeah. to communicate in Italian. And I, I know that people can translate easily and automatically, but it's not like before that I was talking to mm. my students around the world, the people I met around the world. Now it's more like I'm, I'm speaking from Italy. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> and I speak yeah. in Italian. Uh, I, well, pandemic connected to job. The, 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 the initial part was... Uh, was a disaster because I, I felt like everybody, everybody else uh, uh, literally un unsure about the, the next future. Uh, I had always uh, travels planned and this completely mm -hmm. stopped. I realized mm -hmm. that my, my job is not so necessary like to be a, a, a medical Um, uh, and something else I mean I'm, I'm a designer so I, I thought it was natural to to see my my the request of my work during the, the, the first period of the pandemic going down but I mm. I try to be helpful as I can I for, for example I mm. participate to um, Uh, crowdfunding uh, to uh, to have uh, digital devices for those cannot afford that you know the AD mm -hmm. uh, so the school from home then those who have not two or three computers in a family or four iPads to connect you know and yeah. I tried to to help the others but uh, in the meanwhile to be honest I, I wanted that somebody help me because <laughs> because as a freelancer uh, I was totally by my own uh, I yeah. had to invent reinvent the job so I started mm -hmm. to teach online but not mm -hmm. not only that selling stuff uh, merchandising And after that, the, the work came, came up again. Mm. Uh, the good thing is that I really, I really understood how important is, the, is belonging to something to, um, I think my, my family, my, my, mm. my girlfriend and my daughter saved me in that period because I, I felt that I had something uh, really strong to to greet to you know <laughs> um, and yeah. uh, and and I also realized that was something really deep because there are a lot mm. of people that in the period um, split or you know couples that realize that uh, they mm. can stay together because they don't stay together actually they are uh, out of home all the day so yeah Yeah, I, I remember this, uh, this situation. Uh, of course, I know a lot of Italian rappers and a lot of people that appear really, you know, gangsters on the, on the covers, mm -hmm. on the photos. And I, I heard some of them uh, 
complaining a lot, struggling because uh, I cannot stay at home anymore with my girlfriend. And I said, really, is that the real strength mm. is to appear a bad boy yeah. or mm. the, the real strength is to stay at home uh, with your mm. girlfriend uh, and real uh, and can you do that? First of all, yeah. <laughs> uh, so if yes. if that's not good, I think uh, you have to change change something, or mm. it's helpful to understand that is not the that is something to change in your life. For me, it was the uh, the proof that uh, uh, when things goes bad uh, uh, around you, but I mean things that are not under your control your small community that starts from your mm. family, your friends, is over there that you have to, to build something, to embrace so, uh, your, you have to embrace your, your uh, beloved, uh, you know, your family, your relatives, your friends, and, and try to uh, start something good from there. Yeah, mm. yeah. And I think it's so important what you actually I, I feel that it's so powerful what you realize by staying home um, that, you know, this these kind of things like understanding how important it is to have a strong community to go back to. Um, I think these are things that when you're carrying on a life and I say this also from a personal perspective, I also used to travel a lot and be a lot on the road and um, you know, I think that what happens at some point is that you you forget to stop and look around and think like, well, what is the important thing right here, right now, right? And I think mm. that, um, you know, staying for a long period of time in Milan, being around your family, staying at home with your daughter and your girlfriend, made you realize like, hey, well, wait, th this, is, this is what really matters, right? And I think mm -hmm. that's a very deep realization um, there, I think there's a yeah. period for there's a time for everything you know uh, I don't want to mm -hmm. say something um, uh, something that everybody knows but yeah uh, pandemic helped me to to understand that was the moment to stop because it was uh, enough yeah and probably if I had to do it by myself uh, I was I, I don't know if I'm I was able to do that I need a, a signal, you know, something. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So, uh, look, I want to take a left turn here and ask you, how was your childhood like? How, how was your family? Um, how did you grow up? Uh, I mean, I, I had uh, uh, an education to uh, work, hard work. My mm. parents were uh, hard workers my my uh, mother um, she were an employer and my my father wa um, wasn't an uh, a chemical mm. uh, my mother is she's still uh, she's still alive my my father died very young if i consider that if he mm. quit uh, working at 60s and he died at 60 65 so these mm. uh, these uh, uh, teach me to live uh, my life uh, every day that looks something that yeah everybody knows but it's not the same when you realize mm. it in this way the kind of job we does as a freelancer mm. was something that my parents can neither imagine their life was uh, sacrifice everything for the family and maybe enjoy the life uh, when they retired. My my father retired at 63 and had two de two years to enjoy his life, you know. So that teach me that he did great sacrifices, but also that I have to live now. I cannot wait a time that I know I don't know to have. And I'm saying an, a happy thing. I'm saying that I'm, I'm trying to yeah. enjoy my life every day. And yesterday I talked with my with a, a close friend and he was very worried about the war. And I said, oh, come on. Uh, aren't you worried? 
I said, I, I have a, all my best Jets records. I have more than records that I can imagine, the best books that I can have. I have a beautiful cat, beautiful family. Mm. That means uh, e even if everything stopped tomorrow, I'm really happy mm. of what I have today. Mm. And, and I think there's nothing, nothing else to... Yeah, I have uh, faith in the future, but not so much. I have faith in the present <laughs> a lot. <laughs> so, uh, so basically, they, that, that, that's for saying that uh, uh, teachings that I had was not to, uh, okay, do what you want, you can do what you want, is not that point. Um, my family uh, didn't give me an artistic, uh, an artistic, um, uh, knowledge or teachings about that uh, they was they were not into art uh, or music so it's mm. all stuff mm. that I learned from myself and I so I had a little bit more struggling in believe you can do an artistic job uh, and it's a proper job because mm. I, I grew up as the job is you know sweating and and uh, art, the artistic job is even more sweating but uh, the perception that you you probably know it is that mm. everything is fancy and everything is simple and everything is easy totally uh, i was yeah. i was going to add that you know look like hearing what you what you said about your parents that they were you know your education was around hard work and putting in the hours, I think that also that might have had an impact. And I can see by the quality of your work um, that that may have an impact on, they might have, may have had an impact in, in your craft, right? In getting better, really good at what you do because you put in the, the hard work, you put in the hours of work, right? Yeah, it's about discipline. And this doesn't mean that I'm, I'm disciplinate, you know, I'm, mm. I, in not in, the, in that kind of sense. I mean, discipline like karate, judo, like every sport, like playing an instrument means uh, doing the same thing every day. If you have a big goal, you are probably frustrated. If you have small goals yeah. or no goals, you enjoy what you do every day. And at a certain mm. point, you realize you are good at something. And people realize this, ask you to do that for as a job or you can keep it for yourself as an hobby. But basically what I do is to doing this uh, from the analog uh, era now in the social media era, to me is the same. I sit down at the table, I take the mm. pen and I do that. Uh, it mm. changed some, some tools are changed. Uh, they will change again uh, mm. but uh, i think is the is the attitude that doesn't change mm. mine is the mm. attitude of a, a scribe from the middle age with other tools with other people around other kind of uh, clothings and other other um, passions other other another word around me completely but mm -hmm. is the same attitude it, the attitude is to write in a good way and uh, even the writing uh, uh, change form in somehow but it, it's always the same to learn something and try to do it better and better and better mm. and uh, yeah that's it it's enjoying uh, what you do but not uh, especially now, compared to the to the beginning, is not for mm. to to give pleasure to somebody else. This is the effect, mm. to, is the natural effect. Mm. But first of all, you have to surprise yourself to to mm. enjoy what you're doing with yourself. If it's true, I really believe that other people feel it. Mm. I don't want to be too, too much spiritual, you know, but it's about that. Uh, yeah. so, some, some, somebody said that calligraphy or uh, it, 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 um, probably also type, but calligraphy, it turns 
uh, spirit into the matter, you know? Mm. Um, yeah, it's about to express yourself. So express means take something from your inside you and, and this goes uh, uh, on paper, on a canvas, on, a, on an artwork. And so if you are really expressing yourself, uh, the people believes in it. The problem is when you uh, try to imitate somebody else's expression, that's not possible because you cannot express somebody mm. else's feelings. And Luca, how, how did you choose this as an expression mean? Uh, you're now an accomplished calligrapher, an accomplished lettering artist. You said, you just mentioned that you came from a family that had no relation to creativity whatsoever. So what were the steps that took you into the world of letter making? Uh, and I bet we are going to cover uh, some decades here with this no, answer. No, 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 no. I, I want to could be very I, I want to know a little bit what were the steps that took you like into the creative world and then discovering that there was something for you there and then really niching down into what you do nowadays mm, 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 mm. well uh i have to say that uh, uh mine is definitely a, a a story of passion because it mm. started with my first passion i think was the music so mm. I started collecting, let's say collecting. Now it's really a disease. <laughs> but <laughs> I have kind of uh, 6,000 records at home. And I, I won't stop. That's a disease, yeah. That's a problem. I, a beautiful problem. I love that problem. <laughs> um, I wonder what your girlfriend thinks about it. If it's a beautiful problem or not. <laughs> Probably taking up over half of your living room. <laughs> I, I think she stops to asking why, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, you, you, you need you some, have you have, you need some escape you, you have, uh, <laughs> from reality. Totally. Totally. Well, but I, I started collecting music uh, with vinyls uh, when I was uh, mm -hmm. like 10 years old. Uh, I was not into cassettes, not in su into CDs. W it was late 80s. Mm. So it was normal to buy uh, an album. And I, I, I was looking at this artwork on the record cover so big, made with the autographs or painting and big lettering. I remember heavy metal stuff like Metallica, Motley Crue, like uh, Europe. Uh, all this stuff was made by hand. Mm. And I, st I was starting also notice the, the lettering on the packaging. I, I, I talked uh, several times about this because everybody asks you how you started, but every time I add something. So also today I'm, I'm adding something. Well, I remember that I was asking to my mother who, who drew that on the cereal packaging, uh, on the chewing gum packaging and she didn't know but she she suggested me to make some graphic uh, design school and, and was possible at the high school so I thank her to believing okay this guy is not for the for the math is not for uh, that kind of mm -hmm. stuff this guy has to draw <laughs> um, and uh, before the high school I, I discovered another passion that was skateboarding and skateboarding was graphics on the decks. I mean, uh, early 90s, 1991. And I skated until 97. Um, so this means skate videos, skate videos means music. So I realized that I was looking at a VHS for several times and I, I, I learned uh, I can sing uh, uh, a solo from John Coltrane because it was in the skate video and I didn't know I was listening to jazz. You know, this is kind of imp big imprinting because it's all kind of music, uh, all kind of graphics from the, 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 the early 90s was graphics uh, more related to hardcore punk uh, and then became more 
um, flower power, hip hop, early hip hop, you know, de la soul, this kind of, this kind of uh, imaginary. And so I grew up with that, and I, um, I, I just uh, like to write my name, to try to, to write the name in strange things. And uh, at the high school, I discovered graffiti. And graffiti was basically another school parallel to the, the, the high school. One was the rules about the graphics, the typefaces, all by hand. So this was an, another... Another thing that <laughs> it's strange. I started because I liked to draw, and I, I quit the, the 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 school with a computer. And I said, "Oh my God, mm. I, I didn't want it to do this." So I kept to make normal jobs into record shops, uh, this kind of stuff, and 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 keeping my my passion drawing graffiti. Then I remember people. Uh, asking me can you draw me a tattoo can you draw me that can you draw a logo can you draw this and after a while I, I realized that I could do that uh, as a job because I, I was not very well paid in in the shop of course so I said but I can do the the, the same money probably also drawing my my stuff I was scared ab about that but because this means to change completely your mentality to, from a mm. employer to uh, mm. uh, you know a, a freelancer, you you call it solo. Yeah, it's solo. Yeah. You are solo. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, you are alone. Yeah. <laughs> and um, and so, so you, you you were you said you were you were working in this. Um, you, you just mentioned you were working for someone at that time, right? Uh, I, I tried to work in graphic design studio, but was a lot of, uh, mm. you know, Quark Express and then in designs what was book, uh, book design, but with no creativity. And then I was doing my calligraphy. I started to learn calligraphy in 98, 99. First, uh, in the beginning, uh, as a self-teached. Then I discovered, it was uh, before the internet, of course. So I discovered the association here in Italy, other calligraphers uh, from a, a piece of paper that came and said, uh, there's a course of calligraphy. And I said, really? Yeah. Mm. Because I thought the, that the kind of stuff was finished, was ended completely because they were just talking about, the people were just talking about uh, flash, websites, uh, new economy, mm. this kind of stuff. Yeah. Nobody cared about uh, doing stuff with the hand. They were completely yeah. drunk about technology and the, the internet. So I said to myself, I can do this. I, I did this in, in the last 10 years. I don't want to put it in the trash. So I will keep it to do it by myself. And after mm. that, uh, it's another story. <laughs> So and and you while you while you started taking these courses or these workshops in calligraphy, uh, you were still working for design studios, or you were already a no. solo preneur or like a freelancer. No, I was uh, I was uh, I, I quit I quitted completely to uh, work in design studio because I was boring, and I I said okay I I'm, I was a clerk in uh, in this. Uh, um, record store a big record mm. store nothing funny but nothing bad and in the free time i, w I had the passion to to draw uh, and make my i started the rebel Link crew uh, performance with other graffiti writers so we had this project with live calligraphy and i have to say that there was nothing to compare to our uh, our thing because it was not fashionable it was not uh, diffused there was not a lot of people doing calligraphy of my age mm. so there was calligraphy but the, the the old way to intend calligraphy and there was no connection between graffiti writers and calligraphers 
And I said, okay, yeah. this will be... I, I realized later that was my goal. I, it was not completely intentional, but I mean, I tried to say, okay, uh, uh, writers, calligraphers, you're doing, you have passion for letters handmade in the digital yeah. era. Why you don't join together? You, you don't do stuff together. So I, I realized that I was the, <laughs> the man to do it. Because yeah. I started teaching calligraphy and I came from hip hop. So many graffiti writers get in, were getting interested into calligraphy, in type. Yeah. And then they said, okay, this is not something for old people covered by dust, but it's something that we can do and we can, we can take modern tools like big yeah. graffiti, um, markers and chisel yeah. point uh, caps to make tags calligraphy tags you, you can uh, i don't know uh, probably a virus started in that years and now we are see, seeing the the result of that and uh, i played uh, of course a part in that but what what is happening now mm. it's uh, it's another thing it's uh, it's going by its own and that's it's how, back to how that it's supposed to that yeah yeah we're gonna go back to that in just a second um but first i want to like dig, dig deeper into how did you go from working as a clerk for a record store um to freelancing so you were studying calligraphy you were starting to teach workshops in calligraphy you were doing also some assignments on the side uh you mentioned that they were um, commissioning you for creating uh, record labels um, or sorry record uh, covers mm. so how how did you go from you know working in that record store to freelancing uh, how did that happen did it happen from one day to the other that you decided uh, okay I'm gonna start now I'm gonna leave this job I'm gonna um, set up my own studio and start you know, get clients or did you start building slowly and gradually a portfolio mm. of work? Um, I want no. to know a little first bit about all, that. First of all, I have to say, yeah, I, I, I have to say that first of all, I never searched for a client. I never sent a mm. portfolio in my life. Mm. Mm. So I was just passionate into what I was doing. And I think that the people started to talk about that because it was not mm. so common and uh, yes it, it happened uh, one day to the other and I mm. said I'm, um, I'm tired to to be here mm. I was like uh, 25 mm. now I'm 43 so mm. I said okay uh, I will try to do this <clears throat> my girlfriend at the time was a, was a free, were a freelancer as well. Um, so I said, I can do it. Let's try it. Mm. I was completely scared. I remember the first mm. morning I woke up without nothing that I have to do. But I have to decide <laughs> what to do. I'm my, oh, yeah. my boss from today. And I said, oh, my God, really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because you at that point, you, you have to learn to be your boss. And this means yeah. to have a lot of uh, more responsibility, uh, to be more responsible to everything. Uh, grew up in, in somehow, because I, I think that growing up is not something like this it's something like this yeah. you know? so you can grow up with this or this or this or together but at that point there was this part that was growing up uh, mm -hmm. and it was about work i was not uh, just uh, a guy that somebody else have to say you have to do that at that hour and now you're free but i have to decide all these things by myself so i i, and I, wa I want to add a <laughs> follow-up question there sorry um yes yeah. 
you know, what were the first things that you did? Because just from listening to what you were saying, um, and I guess you will agree with me that it just doesn't happen magically. Uh, people don't discover you, you know, in your studio, like in Milan, just like that. You probably made a couple of steps or things that put you out there in, cer in a certain way, starting a website, or a blog or whatever mm. or you know yeah. your social media well at that time there was no <coughs> instagram or whatever but what were the things that at that time did or you feel that made a difference perhaps you cannot you cannot put a a pin on them or you cannot you know come up with the statistics of how successful a certain technique or a certain marketing strategy was but what were the things that you feel had an impact on on you studying or taking off with your freelance business? Well, uh, if I have to find uh, something common in everything I did uh, in the beginning is was just sharing a lot, sharing, uh, sharing mm -hmm. my work uh, with, the, of course, uh, the first social networks. I, I was using uh, Flickr. Flickr was Flickr, a yeah. social network for photos, basically. But mm. after, a, n not in, just in the beginning, but after a while, I, I remember that uh, uh, a typography blog did, uh, uh, yeah, did uh, like a, mm, that blog was talking about my, my work, but, but I didn't know. So from mm. one day to the other one, uh, I had like 200 likes and the other day 2000. So I said, what's happening? Wow. I started to receive uh, emails, requests. Uh, and then I did some videos because I realized there were no calligraphy videos. It was not a professional video, but everybody saw that first videos. Um, it was just the beginning of everything. And then I was doing the performance uh, uh, around the Rebel Inc. And then I was a, mm. I, I was a writer uh, since uh, more than 10 years. So all these things make happen, little things like having small clients. And then I had a, a big client. Uh, I remember that a, a um, advertising uh, agency called me for a, a big advertising, a campaign, mm. and I and I said, "Wow, the, this money is what I can have in more than three months uh, at the shop," and I did the yeah. job in two days. Was not so nice eh? because then I learned about taxes. <laughs> I learned and taxes in Italy, and uh, I learned uh, a lot of things. But I said, "Wow, this is feasible. It's possible." Yeah. And after that, it's a matter to uh, mm, believe in yourself. I know that it's mm. easy to say, but uh, how many of us we, we believe really in ourselves? Or we, uh, we talk, we, we say this to us, try to convince us, but are we really convinced? I'm, I'm yeah. starting to be uh, sure of what I'm doing just right now, mm. but not so sure. Mm. But at the beginning, I was completely unsure. And I think these things uh, helps you to get better and better and better because you are not safe. Yeah. You are not covered, so you need to wake up and do the best can, you can. Uh, it's challenging and helpful. And and I want to ask you one more thing about client work. Um, so you said that you had that first client work that was really like the one where you realized, like, hey, I I could actually make a living with this, right? Mm. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. Throughout time, you know, I don't know how many years have passed from that first experience with that one client that, you know, paid for three months uh, of a salary with the two days work and required just two days of work. I want to ask you nowadays, what are, how, how has your criteria to take on work 
change. And I tell you this because when, as I was researching for this, um, for this podcast, um, I read an interview where you were saying that you, even when you're an accomplished designer and calligrapher, um, and you have worked for big clients, you continue taking on work that has to do with, I don't know, wedding invitations or things that are, or diplomas or things that are more, you know, are more what everyone will imagine as the work of a calligrapher, right? And you mentioned that there was something really great uh, in these jobs that was that it kept you fresh, it kept your skills fresh because it requires a lot of uh, practice and it makes you like repeat things um, or repeat a certain ductus or repeat a certain calligraphic style. So I want to ask you a little bit about this, how, you know, how your criteria to take on jobs have, have changed or have not changed throughout the years? Well, uh, first of all, uh, we, we need to ask uh, what is the calligrapher job? Mm, yeah. And this is a huge topic because uh, I'm trying to write about this. I wrote a book, uh, uh, unfortunately, just in Italian, mm. that is called Anima in Chiostro. So soul and ink and talks a little bit about this, but I will now I'm, I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working, try to explain this uh, because uh, writing it makes everything more clear also to me. Uh, I mean, uh, basically with calligraphy, you learn a technique, some techniques, mm -hmm. how to hold the pen, how to use the ink, the paper and styles, a lot of styles that are uh, saved in the history of handwriting. Yeah. And then you decide, yeah. then you decide what to do with that. At the beginning, I had not the enough tools to understand that I can do whatever I want. So I said, mm -hmm. OK, I will go to I, I was like a, I had my heroes like Hermann Zaff, like Herr Blubalin, like Saul Bass, you know, and then I said that I want to do this. I would stay in the studio and draw letters, get paid for that and have fun and discover new forms. I had in my uh, in my brain this idea. I want to to know where I am in this history of lettering mm -hmm. and what I can do in this small path not mm -hmm. just to stay uh, uh, look what happened i want to be a, a protagonist in the in the time i have uh, mm. by my side so good or bad i want to say something and i think uh, the the mixture between graffiti and all the experience i had uh, plus this really ancient art as calligraphy of craft as calligraphy uh, where a, a big uh, a big teaching after that comes what you can do with these tools mm -hmm. that you have so I know I can make letters but I can make letters on a bottle for a label for a wedding for design for packaging uh, I can paint mm -hmm. I can uh, I can use it with virtual reality I can use it in several things are letters and, and communication is ma made by images and letters. Mm. So it's half of the game. So it, it's just up to you where you want to go with that letter. So, for example, I, I cannot I can even not uh, be so uh, so happy to draw stuff like this, you know, <laughs> record covers. I just like the stuff for those watching yeah. YouTube, you're seeing this, but for those that uh, are listening, you can uh, look at showing a yeah, uh, sorry, I a, there a was an image. Sleeve, re, there's a, a record sleeve with a very funky lettering, like kind of 50s style. Kind yeah, of yeah, yeah. And I, I, I think uh, I'm, I'm really lucky that somebody says me, ah, you like that stuff. You can draw this stuff. Can you can you draw yeah. a cover? 50s style for me yes yeah. and i'm and i'm but i i worked for that in somehow 
sharing my passion mm. with vinyl covers and and everything comes at that point that uh, becomes your job what you asked me is uh, is about to, to um, the diversification of the, the the job so i think that uh, um, writing envelopes for events or uh, fashion or uh, weddings is the more most boring and uh, interesting thing at the same point point but because it's mm. uh, basically it's training and it's paid mm. and you become better and better and better and you would never spend eight hours a day yeah. Draw, yeah. Uh, writing the same thing because it, it looks like a punishment but when it's paid it's a yeah. great training and after that I say okay yeah. yesterday I was on on the set of a movie treated like a, like a star because oh the calligrapher does this and now I'm I'm, I'm, I'm writing the envelopes yes it's part, it's part of my job I can say yes or no I feel lucky to because I can write to, mm. for living and make uh, really different things in, in writing increases the, the chance that I have more job and more situation I can explore with lettering. With lettering, I met people that I could never imagine, musicians, yeah. um, actors, you know, uh, political um, politicians you know uh, yeah and uh, a lot of craftsmen that probably I would never met if I, I didn't say yes to something uh, with time I I have to say that now, now I, I know a little bit better I closed the, the, the path and now I'm, I'm doing less things than before mm. because before yeah. I was trying uh, for example, letterpress and engraving, uh, everything. Uh, and then I, you know, if they calls you to make something, probably you became that thing. So you are good in yeah. writing. They call you for, uh, they ask you for to write something because you probably are more good in that. I studied graphic mm. design, but is not by my best uh, skill. I can make a cover, but lettering is the main ingredient of the color of, of the cover. Sorry. So yeah, uh, it's not just uh, choosing a job. <laughs> it's choosing yeah. what you like, and and uh, as I um, is the title of my my first book. It was take your pleasure seriously. It's mm. first of all and a passion, yeah, and you take it seriously. Great this is a great segue to into uh, your publishing house, right? The Lazy Dog Press, uh, where you publish your uh, recent book, Take uh, Your Pleasure Seriously. Um, tell me a little bit about, about that, because I wonder, you have a successful business in lettering and calligraphy. I wonder why starting a new business that is I would say way more complicated to create books and assemble them and you know distribute them. I bet that that's a lot of work. Um, so tell me a little bit about why. What were the motivations for you to start something like this? Well, first of all, it's a lot of job, as as you say. Uh, I'm not alone in the publishing house. There's a job mm. of uh, other people's, uh, really passionate, uh, skilled people. Uh, but after that. Uh, all these things that can be passions or job, uh, maybe both, uh, but it they absorbs totally your time. So that's why, mm. if you write me an email, I probably don't understand. Uh, I, don't, I don't answer uh, immediately because it's not possible. It, it, it's it's mm. a lot of things to do, but. Uh, the great thing that is that you have the control of uh, what you're doing. So I don't have any uh, people helping me. I do everything by my myself. Yeah. Um, no people in a stage, uh, nothing. Sometimes I have 
people who helps me but n nobody works with me uh, mm -hmm. but the publishing guys house is another thing uh, uh, it's about the, the the first book the story started in 2012 <coughs> so it's 10 years mm -hmm. and we started with with my book and making few books uh, a year and now we are doing like 10 books a year yeah. we became independent uh, more than before uh, because we can make our distribution by by our own uh, mm. this means that uh, basically we we don't we don't make money uh, to leave uh, with, uh, from the publishing house mm. but we make money to make other books uh, it's not easy but we are completely mm. free and this is the important thing Luca we have covered a lot of ground your story with letters but also your childhood we have covered you know what are your motivations to use um, typography and letter forms as a creative mean and also how did you started a new company um, where when you are already built like running an already successful company or solo company as a freelancer or as a calligrapher and lettering artist and I want to go back a little bit to the basics um, as we um, wrap up the podcast and I want to ask you what, what are the two things and I, first I want to say why I do this question you know I think that many of the people that come to this podcast are because they are really good at something and I think that Developing a skill to that level requires a lot of motivation, a lot of discipline, as you said, a lot of work. And I, I'm just, I just admire all the people who can achieve that in their life, whatever they do, um, football players or sportsmen or women um, or people that do, you know, ad cooks or whatever. I think that acquiring a skill to a very high level, it's it's an amazing thing to do in your life. And I want to ask you, what were the two things that you think made a huge difference in you becoming really good as a calligrapher and lettering artist? <laughs> if you have to well, name two uh, or one. Yeah. I don't want to repeat myself too much, but uh, if I look at any uh, basketball player, uh, soccer player, you know, uh, or those that uh, makes a lot of sacrifices to get their goals, especially in uh, uh, professional sports or you know, mm. this kind of I, I, I knew a, a, a karate master. I did a, a, a mm. video with him and this man was five times uh, world champion. Yeah. And uh, all his life was around that thing, eating, sex, mm. uh, habits, everything was about mm. karate mm. and be a master in that. So. The first thing I have mm. to say, you have to be passionate in that. You cannot decide, oh, this, that's a good job because it becomes mm. your life. So you have to understand mm. that this uh, will be something in your, in your life by night, by evening, in the morning, every time. You don't quit to be a, an artist or a lettering artist. You look at the letters in a movie, you look at the letters in the streets, uh, the signs. Uh, you look at the the the, the, the <clears throat> you know, everything you receive in your uh, in your post uh, <laughs> everything everything is lettering and everything it's part of your job and never stops so yeah. you ha have to be passionate so I think this is uh, this is the biggest thing you, you cannot mm. decide to do something because there is place it's not a marketing thing so yeah. let me say that there's a huge difference between those who want to uh, make uh, get, get a result nowadays with uh, 
social network of course everybody knows that you you can be uh, you can appear uh, professional or important in your job because you have followers but you know that it's not about the followers then you have to do something mm. you have to be able to do something and especially mm. that's why I, I like to make performance because performance is people in front of you and you can make mistakes you can go, go, do good things at the same time but it's about your skills and and the discipline and uh, the fact you did that day by day by day by day you cannot yeah. lie and on the social network on the internet you can easily lie yeah. so i'm not uh, mm, i cannot have the same judgment about the 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 lettering artists I follow in the past on the books yeah. and the one you I, you can follow on uh, it's not the same thing it's like to compare mm. Van Gogh and Damien Hirst it's two different ages two different ways to be an artist two different situations but I in somehow uh, I was in in the previous uh, age and now I'm into this age and I hope to to be mm. in the next age with the same spirit so Yeah. Uh, don't make too many questions just do just try to be good at what you do uh, I remember uh, I don't want to anticipate too much but I remember you 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 had a, a question like uh, what what what's the suggestion to give uh, to those uh, who are starting or they want to 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 make a career Well, I, it's sure, not. Sure, you want to yeah. you want to do that? Yes. Well, I I remember this uh, this quote. I want to because it it was really strong reading that. It was a quote that I founded, and I I thought it was from Patti Smith, but I realized it was from Barrocks, that was a close friend mm -hmm. of Patti Smith, and probably Patti Smith in the in that period was, she she were not so, um, in a good moment. And the suggestion was just try to be good in what you're doing. Try to be honest in what you're doing. Uh, don't make compromises. And uh, uh, make a good name of you. Mm. Protect your work and your name. And probably that name will become his own currency. You know, mm. and this is so easy to say, but so hard to do. But I think yeah. it's uh, all about that. Yeah. I love the idea that turning your name into a currency. Luca, to wrap up the podcast, I started recently to do a little, a little small game uh, mm -hmm. that is called finish the sentence. And I essentially start a sentence and you finish it. Are you up for a little game? Mm, I hope so. Let's try. <laughs> okay. So I'm extremely good at... Cooking. I'm terrible at... Organize my work. <laughs> my friends always laugh at me because... Because of me. <laughs> <laughs> If I wouldn't be doing this for a living, I would be... I would be... Uh, a clerk in a uh, record store. <laughs> As in the beginning, but my own. <laughs> back, back to the basics. <laughs> one, one day, one day I'm going to... Uh, put that canvas on the wall instead keeping it in the in the floor that one <laughs> right oh yeah 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 <laughs> so he's, for those that are listening he's showing he has we are speaking with Luca right now in his studio in Milan and he has actually another um, frame standing on the floor so apparently he, this is a thing of him That of his that is like leaving 
the frames just standing on the floor so yeah a lot um, of a lot of so stuff here on the floor because i don't want to offend the walls with one of or another so i cannot choose the, everything is on the floor but one day <laughs> one day so the last two ones right now is the perfect time to eat i didn't eat anymore oh yes <laughs> if i were to start again i would definitely a lawyer <laughs> to defend my work <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Thank you so much, Luca. Where can people find you? Instagram, Luca Barcellona. Okay, so I'm going to add this to uh, our show notes together with um, your website so that people can find you. Um, it was great talking to you today. I really appreciate you taking For time. For me as well. It was a real, uh, real pleasure, a real honor. Uh, I didn't know I was so important to have a mic. Oh, yes, you have a mic. That's a great acquisition, I tell you. You sound, everyone sounds a lot more intelligent and clever and smart when they have a good mic. So, <laughs> yeah, great thing to have. Can you Thank hear you my so voice much, now? For, oh, yes. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for listening and see you on the next episode of Martina Flores Open Studio. Bye bye. Thank you, Martina. So, this is it. I hope you loved this episode. You can find me, the host of the show, on social networks at Martina Flor on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. If you have a question or comments, go to martinaflor.com slash podcast, where you can see previous episodes, find show notes, and send voice memos with your comments and questions. You can also watch these episodes on YouTube. Just go to martinaflor.com slash YouTube to find them. You can, of course, Listen to all our episodes on your favorite podcast platform. If you loved this episode, subscribe to this podcast. And if you leave us a review, it will help others find us. Thank you all for listening and see you in the next episode of Martina Flores Open Studio. Bye-bye.